Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the new VW Atlas. This was unveiled last night here at the Chicago Auto Show and I'm gonna take a quick tour of this one and show you a couple things that I like and maybe a couple that not so much. Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, so this is the day after their world premiere, and this is the new three-row VW Atlas, and just over there is the two-row Cross Sport version of it. But I'm gonna show you a quick walk around of both of these, and show you a couple things that I really like, and a couple things that maybe not so much. Starting with what I really like is the updated look up front. So the inside and outside have been heavily, heavily, heavily refreshed, but they ride on very much the same platform as before with some new internals, think under that hood, but we'll get to that in a second. One thing I really like about the new look is the just seamless look of this LED light bar that goes across the front, kind of leaning into what is so popular with electric vehicles nowadays. And then you've got these LED lights it's very handsome grill, very masculine vehicle in its own right, and uh, really sets at, stands out in the sea of three-row crossovers right now. Very handsome. And then the new VW logo. So we've got an outline of the VW logo. That is a really nice look here on the outside. The big news of the 2024 Atlas starts under the hood here with the new powertrain. So this is a two liter turbo four and it replaces the old four cylinder and the VR6. So you get one engine option here in the new 2024 Atlas. And so yes, gone is the V6. So one thing I don't necessarily like is the lack of V6. We are seeing the V6 die left and right. Toyota has been removing it from their products. You can no longer get it in their full size sedan, which is now the Crown, you can no longer get a V6 in the Highlander or even the new three row big Grand Highlander. So yeah, only four cylinder options in those, only a four cylinder option here. But this two liter turbo powertrain makes 269 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. It is expected to maintain the same 5,000 pound tow rating and it is mated to an eight speed uh, automatic transmission. Front wheel drive is standard, but you can get uh, VW's four motion all wheel drive in this one. But yep, one thing, not so much, four cylinder powertrain. As we move along the side profile, not a whole lot has actually changed on this side profile. So still very blocky, boxy, masculine, upright styling here in the VW uh, Atlas and that's okay i really like the design of it i liked it when it came out and it is aged very well moving around back to the back though you will see an updated rear end with new lighting back here so another thing that i really like on this is the updated lighting in the back so you've got this full led light bar this very interesting look led brake light running light combination here on the side that mimics what the headlights are doing and have done over the years. And then a red outlined VW logo here on the back. Oh, I absolutely love that. That is a top notch look right there. You can see this is a four motion SEL trim uh, with the R-Line package. We saw that in the grill up front. We open up the hatch on this one. It is a power hatch and you can see this is a three row vehicle. The uh, blue cross sport over there is the two row version. This is the three row version and there's plenty of space back here in the back. You can see there is your subwoofer and you've got a little bit of storage around it under this false load floor. You can flip and fold the manual seats down very flat and you can see even that second row folds very flat. So you have a nice continuous surface with very small gaps in between all of uh, the rows as you fold them down for a very cavernous interior. And then when it comes to folding them back up, you just grab that uh, strap and pull it back into place. So a very nice option there. And why don't we go ahead and hop inside and see what it's like inside the new Atlas.
Coming into the front door right here and opening it up, moving inside, you can see a very premium cabin. Very upscale look and materials here. We've got wood, we've got the updated screen here, we've got digital cockpit plus up front here with a very nice layout. Loving the red lighting in here. Very upscale look, very sporty look. We've got the leather wrapped steering wheel with perforations. Very, very premium interior. Looking here on the door panels, we've got wood, we've got leather with perforation and stitching. Just a very upscale look all the way around dual level uh, air vents up here, which is a very interesting look. I like that a lot. So you can get the air in the right place. And then just moving around, you can see this one's got a Harman Kardon sound system, no Fender system in this one. And then some things I don't necessarily like about the interior, this whole setup right here. So the climate control is a little slider right here, but these aren't backlit. So in the dark, it's just dark. The volume slider is not backlit. So in the dark, it's just dark. I don't understand why even after all the comments online, why people are, or why VW is still putting this system uh, in their vehicles and not at least backlighting this or getting some sort of lighting on it but you can see this does have their gesture control. So that is something I really do like as a techie. Uh, I'm sure it would annoy some people uh, quite in intensely when it comes to just reaching up here and oops, I, I, I didn't mean to do that, but I, I really like that as a tech person. Another thing, not so much, is all the gloss black plastic in here. I know I'm nitpicking, but dust and fingerprints uh, would accumulate on this. We've seen gloss white in some vehicles lately, and I've been really impressed with that. Gear selector lever is interesting. I'm not going to say I like it or dislike it. I'm just going to say it's interesting. Two USB-C ports up here, some uh, rubberized storage, forward and aft cup holders, a large uh, center console with a USB-C in there as well, some rubberized storage here. Very nice uh, storage options. And then you've got this massive opening underneath this kind of uh, bridge-like center console. So you can put bags under here and just work accordingly. You can see we do have heated and ventilated front seats. These are very nice. They are very comfortable. And then moving up, we do have a panoramic glass roof. I like that a whole lot. But overall, it just feels like a nice up version of the Atlas that we've already tested here on the channel. Really liked that one. Let's see what the back seat and the third row are like. All right, coming around to the back seat, you can see we do have a bench seat here in this one. So that is something I really do like. I think uh, bucket seats have kind of been overplayed in family vehicles. So, so that's something I really like. I also really like the sunshades here in the second row. So manual sunshades that do a good job of filling the entire back window. And these are very large back windows. So everything about this window setup, I like. I like the size of the windows, I like um, the manual sunshades in them. And then we've got some additional storage here, here, and here, and here on the back doors. So leaning into this being a family vehicle, it'll do very well there. Coming in and sitting in the second row seat, I can tell you that front seat was much further than I would have it at 510 and here sitting behind wherever this was, it's a very comfortable seating position. I've got nothing to worry about whatsoever. You do have tri-zone climate in this one and you've got your climate controls, vents on the back of the center console. I don't love that these aren't in the ceiling. I remember when our son was in a rear facing car seat, that did not work for me as well in the heat of Texas. So that's one thing I wish they had gone roof mounted, but we'll forgive them of that. Heated outboard seats here, and then you can see we've got some USB power down below. We've got map pockets on the back of both seats. So that's a nice option there. And then we've got a fold down center armrest with two cup holders that stays uh, perpendicular uh, or parallel to the seat bottom, perpendicular to the back. So it actually works as an armrest. It doesn't flop all the way down. Really like that a whole lot. You can see headroom in here because of the boxy shape is very good. I, I'm, I'm just fine back here and I've got a really good view out of the panoramic roof, but let's check out that third row seat. All right, before we get in the back row, I do wanna say a few more things I really like about the second row that have to do with that third row. First, it is a 60-40 split and it 
slides. So you can actually get it quite close to you. So if you do have a kid in the car seat back behind you, uh, you can make sure that you can reach and access them from up front and you can actually even slide that back. So I really like the slide functionality and just how far forward that goes, uh, which will also give more room to the third row of seats. And then this lever right here, oh my goodness, as a dad with a child seat in the second row, this, more of this please. Why more automakers do not put this type of car seat in the second row that allows for flipping and folding it forward with a child seat in place is beyond me. I, I think more automakers need to do this. And so VW wins huge dad points with me on that one. And then climbing back into the third row, you can see it is a 50-50 split bench third row with these headrests that absolutely must be raised uh, to sit in the third row if you plan on sitting back here at all and being comfortable. But 50-50 split and it is a little bit tight. We're actually gonna go ahead and pull this seat back and put it back in its normal position. So I did slide it all the way back. You can see it is a little dark back here, but uh, my knees are in the seat back. So going back to the slide functionality of this and just how much it slides, if an adult or a couple of adults had to ride back here, just a little bit of negotiation with the seats up front and I, I think you would be quite comfortable because the width is good back here and you actually do have air vents here on the side, some cup holders, two USB-C ports over here. So very nice amenities back here in the third row. It's not just a uh, bonus seat, there is a lot going on. And then you do get some latches back here where you can fold the seats down if you want or you can use that handle there and flip and fold it up all the way. Well, that is about it from the third row of the VW Atlas. Sorry, I didn't get time to get over to that cross sport. There are people flocking all around these here at the Chicago Auto Show. But what you need to know about that one is basically they just chopped the back off back here and reduced cargo space and got rid of this third row. So if you're really a family that wants some bonus seating, this is the one to get. Uh, that one just looks a little bit better, a little bit nicer. That is it for me in this Atlas from the 2023 Chicago Auto Show. If you want to see more of our coverage from the Auto Show, find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk, or you can head to gtgaragetalk.com. Links to everything from there. Hit all the buttons down below. Like, subscribe, comment, follow. All the things to let the algorithm know to show you more content for, for, from us. That was more hard than it needed to be. As for me, I've got to get out and let other people film this atlas. So until next time, gearheads, bye.